Good morning. I want to invite you guys to stand. Like always, I will pray for us. Jesus, we love you. We thank you for uh, your love. We thank you for your word. We thank you that you're here with us. Uh, Lord, I do believe, I said this earlier, I, I do believe that you filled our lives with mostly good things. And we praise you and we thank you for that. Uh, we bless you this morning. Have your way in our service. In Jesus' name, amen. Good morning. Welcome to the House of the Lord. You may be seated as we continue our service. Just a few announcements to kind of keep on your radar as we get closer and closer to Easter and Holy Week. And I just want to make sure everyone knows what's happening here at Bethany. So the first thing is, uh, when you walked at the sanctuary uh, doors, you should have received a bulletin, but also a square welcome card. And I invite you, please go ahead and fill it out. We want to know that you're here uh, worshiping with us. That allows us to connect with you, even outside of the weekend. Um, on that card, there's also prayer requests, how we can be praying for you, encouraging you, uplifting you in your walk with the Lord. Um, another thing that I just want to say thank you. Uh, thank you to all the Carnival volunteers who gave their time and their talents to serve uh, here this past Friday as we had our school carnival. If you weren't here, imagine the whole building filled with inflatables, games, face paintings, young kids running around. It was, it was an amazing event uh, to see all the young families, all the young preschoolers, kindergartners having fun here in this place. And so thank you again for all of those people who gave their time, talents uh, to serve uh, Bethany, to serve Christ um, in that way. Also, uh, here, uh, we're in the middle of the Lenten season, 
So we continue to have midweek services throughout our season of Lent. Those midweek services take place on Wednesdays. Uh, we have one service at noon, which is more contemporary, a praise band um, with our school children here in this place. Or if you're busy during the day, um, we also have a service in the evening um, at 7 o'clock. Before the 7 o'clock service, we have dinner together in the gathering space out there at 6. So on Wednesdays, if you work during the day, come get dinner for free at 6, and then come stay for worship at 7 o'clock. I think the menu for Wednesday, the 6th, is, uh, I think there's a slide, but I think it's roast chicken and smoked brisket. Oh, there we go. Roast chicken and smoked brisket. So if that doesn't get you hungry, I mean... I don't know what does. You're in Kansas City. Come on. Yeah, so come get dinner on Wednesday on 6 o'clock, and then come stay for worship at 7. Also, uh, just something to kind of keep on your radar, Easter is early this year, so that means Holy Week is going to be early this year, too. It's the last weekend in March. Um, so you're going to see more publication about that, but Palm Sunday, we'll have, two service, we'll have a Saturday night before, but then two services on Sunday, just like a normal weekend. And then after Palm Sunday, we begin Holy Week, we kind of get into the, the busyness of all the different church services. So Monday, Thursday, we'll have two services, one at noon, one at seven. Good Friday, one at noon, one at seven again. Uh, Easter weekend, we'll have a Saturday night service, and that will be like a, an Easter vigil. So um, there won't be a sermon, that particular service, but it will be more prayers, readings, and more geared uh, remembering our baptism, I kind of envision us starting out in the gathering space, walking in with candles like a, like a vigil would look like. That's on Easter Saturday. And then Sunday, we have three Easter services. We have a sunrise, traditional service at 7, 1 at 8.30, and then we have our contemporary service at 11. So I'd like to see um, all of you at, at more than one of those, all of them, if you want to come experience all of Holy Week. Uh, but that's kind of what it looks like. You'll get more publication about that in the upcoming weeks here. And then last but not least, um, I just want to let you all know that I have received the call papers to be senior pastor uh, here in this place. Um, I want to ask uh, for prayers uh, for me, prayers for my wife Molly, prayers for Noah, prayers for the baby-to-be um, as we deliberate this call that I have received, um, as I deliberate the, the call that I have received. Um, so continue to keep us in your prayers as we deliberate this next couple of weeks and hopefully make an announcement soon. Um, we're excited about the ministry here in this place, but um, just thank you again for your prayers as we continue to deliberate um, the call that I have received. Um, and last but not least, we have a special moment in ministry this morning. Uh, we had a baptism earlier at 8.30, Theodore, or Teddy is his name, and today at the late service we have Madden. Madden's going to be brought into God's family. Oh, I love the smile, Madden, awesome, yeah. He's going to be brought into God's family a little bit later on in the service today, so I want to say thank you to all the family and friends of Madden who have come out to support him in this special moment in his life as he's called and invited into God's family as a son of God, and we're excited to see and witness that here this morning. Those are all the announcements I have for you. I invite you to please rise as we lift our voices and bring our praises before the Lord.
our service this morning in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God invites us to gather in his name. We are gathered to worship and praise. Our Heavenly Father's house is a house of prayer for all nations. He gathers people from every corner of the earth to sing his praises. We listen to God's word. We hear the message proclaimed of Christ crucified. We continue with some confession. Though this is a house of prayer, we do not always honor God's house as we should. Still, our Heavenly Father is merciful, and he invites us ever into his house to ask for forgiveness. We now have a moment for silent self-examination. confess together. Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbors. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. Disrupt our sinfulness. Forgive us, renew us, and restore us. On account of Jesus. Amen. The good news for us. Almighty God in his mercy sent Jesus into our world. Not only to disrupt our sinfulness. But also to forgive us. By his death and resurrection. As a call and ordained servant of Christ. And by his authority. I therefore forgive you. All your sins. In the name of the Father. And of the Son. And of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We are forgiven. We are forgiven because of Christ crucified. The peace of the Lord be with you. I invite you now to ask forgiven people, as people who have received the forgiveness of Jesus, share the peace of the Lord with those sitting next to you. Welcome one another to the house of the Lord. All right, you may be seated, and I invite you to please return to your pew as we continue our service with the service of baptism, welcoming Madam into the family of God here in this place. So we begin the service of baptism. We gather in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Lord and Savior's baptism is going to be his disciples in the last chapter of Matthew. All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I will be with you always to the very end of the age. The holy apostles of the Lord has also written, the promise is for you and your children, and baptism now saves you. We also learn from the word of God that we are all conceived, born sinful, and so are in need of forgiveness. We would be lost forever unless delivered from sin, death, and everlasting condemnation. But the Father of all mercy and grace has sent his Son, Jesus Christ, who paid for the sin of the whole world, so that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. Madam, receive the sign of the cross both upon your forehead upon your heart 
to mark you as one redeemed by Christ the crucified. Also, hear how our Lord Jesus has opened the kingdom of heaven to the little children. People were bringing little children to Jesus to have him touch them. But the disciples rebuked him. When Jesus saw this, he was indignant. He said to them, let the little children come to me and do not hinder them. For the kingdom of God belongs to such as these. I tell you the truth. Anyone who will not receive the kingdom of God like a little child will never enter it. Parents and sponsors, after this child has been baptized, it is your duty and privilege as parents and sponsors to remember him in your prayers. Put him in mind of his baptism. Give your counsel and aid that he be brought up in the true knowledge and worship of God. And be taught the Ten Commandments, the Creed, the Lord's Prayer. And that as he grows in years, you place in his hands the Holy Scriptures. Bring him to the service of God's house and provide for his further instruction in the Christian faith. And thus abiding in his baptismal grace and in communion with the church, he may grow to lead a godly life to the praise and honor of Jesus Christ. So I ask you, do you promise to fulfill these obligations? God enable you both to will and to do his faithful and loving work with his grace fulfill what we are unable to do. Bethany, in order to ask the blessing of our Lord Jesus Christ upon the gathering of this child into the family of our Father, let us together, as a congregation, pray the family prayer that he has given us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord preserve your coming in and your going out from this time forth, and even forevermore. Amen. Because this child cannot answer for himself, we shall all, together with sponsors and parents, faithfully speak on his behalf in the testimony of the forgiveness of sins and the birth of life of faith, which God our Father bestows in and through baptism. So I ask us all anew, do we renounce the devil and all his works and all his ways? I do renounce them. Do you believe in God the Father Almighty? Yes, I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son? Yes, I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. And do you believe in the Holy Spirit? Yes, I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. So parents, I ask, who brings this child to be baptized? And how is this child to be named? Madden Warren McCandless, I baptize you in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and in the name of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given you the new birth of water and the Spirit and has forgiven you all your sins, strengthen you with his grace to the life everlasting. Peace be.
receive this burning light, live always by the light of Christ, and be ever watchful for his coming, that you will meet him with joy and enter with him to the marriage feast of the Lamb in his kingdom, which shall have no end. We pray. Almighty and most merciful God and Father, we thank and praise you that you are graciously preserve and enlarge your family and have granted Madden the new birth in holy baptism and made him a member of your son, our Lord Jesus Christ, and an heir of your heavenly kingdom. We humbly implore you that as he has now become your child, you would keep him in his baptismal grace, that according to all your good pleasure, he may faithfully grow to lead a godly life of prayer to the praise and honor of your holy name. And finally, with all your saints, obtain the promised inheritance in heaven through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Lord and giver of life, look with kindness upon the father and mother of this child and upon all our parents. Let them ever rejoice in the gift you have given them. Enable them to be teachers and examples of righteousness for their children. Strengthen them in their own baptism so that they may share eternally with their children salvation you have given them. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Madam, may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you and be with us all. Amen. Can we welcome Madden into the family of God here in this place? now continue our service with readings from God's Word. Our first reading today is from Romans, the 10th chapter, beginning at the 11th verse. As the scripture says, anyone who trusts in him will never be put to shame. For there is no difference between Jew and Gentile. The same Lord is Lord of all and richly blesses all who call on him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. How then can they call on the one they have not believed in? And how can they believe in the one of whom they have not heard? And how can they hear without someone preaching to them? And how can they preach unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news. But not all the Israelites accepted the good news. For Isaiah says, the Lord who has believed our message. Consequently, faith comes from hearing the message. And the message is heard through the word of Christ. Our second reading today is from Matthew Chapter 7. Will you please rise for the gospel? Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but the one who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. On that day, many will say to me, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name and cast out demons in your name and do many mighty works in your name? And then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you workers of lawlessness. Everyone then who hears these words of mine and does them will be like the wise man who built his house on the rock. And the rain fell, and the floods came, and the winds blew and beat on that house, but it did not fall, because it had been founded on the rock. And everyone who hears these words of mine and does not do them will be like the foolish man who built his house on the sand. And the rain fell, and the floods came, and the winds blew and beat against that house, and it fell, and great was the fall of it. And when Jesus had finished these sayings, the crowds were astonished at his teaching, for he was teaching them as one who had authority and not as their scribes. may be seated. Please pray with me. 
Heavenly Father, gracious Lord, we thank you for this day and a chance to gather in your house to worship and praise you. Uh, Father, we pray that as we dive into the scripture today, that our eyes may be opened, that we may hear your love anew and hear about your grace and mercy that you've freely given us through the work of your son, Jesus. Father, we ask this in your son's holy and precious name. Today we're beginning our, or continuing our sermon series called The Being Challenge, where we're talking about different habits, different disciplines, different things that we can put into our lives to hit the target, to hit the aim of being more like Jesus in this world. So far throughout this sermon series, we've talked about habits, and we talked about how important habits are. Habits, the things that we do on a normal, everyday basis, they determine who we are. They reveal who we are, the things that we do in our everyday lives. Last week, you all talked about community and how you're not alone as you're walking together. You're not alone in your journey of faith as you cling to the promises that Jesus has given you. You have people here around you. We call them the church or the body of Christ praying for you, walking alongside of you, strengthening you in your walk with the Lord. Today our focus is going to be the habit of studying Scripture, diving into God's Word to hear His promises for you. Studying Scripture is obviously important. It reveals who God is. And as we read Scripture, we do hear about our God being slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. We, we hear about our God who is faithful, and he carries through, follows through on his promises for you and for me. Today we're talking about the habit of diving into scripture and the importance of what that looks like in our lives. I, I want you to imagine with me, uh, there, there was a family, and they moved. They moved from their old neighborhood, their old home, their old city, their old state. They moved to a new place, a place that they'd never been there before. They, they uprooted the lives of their families to move to this new environment. And this family, as they've moved to this new city, this new state, this new neighborhood, they did one of the first things that maybe you do when you move. They, they mapped out where is the closest grocery store to figure out where they can go to get the grocery supplies they need to to feed themselves, to have dinner. They look to see, where's the closest gas station? How, where am I going to go if my tank is on low? How close is it to our new home? This family, both of the parents worked, and so they, they look to see, what is the closest way or fastest way? How do I get to my new employment? How do I get to my new job at this new house? And the students, the, the two kids, they're both high school boys, they determined... How close was their school? How late could they sleep in on a weekday and still get to school on time? And, and after they did all that reconnaissance or, or, or background research, they finally got to the hard work of unpacking. And so they, they spent time unpacking boxes, boxes that they had spent weeks packing up before. And, and as they unpacked boxes in this new house, they quickly discovered that the new house that they were moving into was much bigger than their old house. And as they started to put stuff away, they quickly saw that there were quite a few bare spots in this new house. They decided, we need to get some new furniture. And, and, and since they just bought a house, they just spent a lot of money getting a new home, they decided, we're going to do something, and we're going to save some money. And instead of going to the nice furniture store down the street, they Googled on their phones, where is the closest Ikea? We're, we're going to save some money, and we're going to put the stuff together ourselves. And that's what they did. So the family, they got in their car, they got in their truck, they went to the Ikea, they found this nice, beautiful couch, and the parents said, this would look beautiful in our new living room. It's even one of those couches that has the, the pull-out bed underneath, in case family come to visit. They can sleep on it, too. Beautiful couch, and they said, we're going to get this one. So they did. They, they went and they bought it. They went to the warehouse in Ikea. They bought all the pieces they needed to put together. They put it in their truck. They loaded it. They went home. And as they're getting home, the mom and the dad, the parents, they said to their sons, who were in high school, 
we have other busy, we have other things we need to do, other important things we need to unpack. So you two high school boys, you're going to put this couch together. It could be a good brotherly bonding project for you. And the parents, they gave them the task, you're going to build the couch, and they left the room. And as they left the room, the brothers, they said to one another in confidence, we don't need to read the instructions. We don't need to hear what the instructions have to say for us. We're smart enough. We're in high school. We can figure this out. And so they ripped open the boxes. They got all the pieces on the floor, and they started working. And they worked for about an hour, and they had something that kind of resembled a couch. And the parents walked in, and they looked at one another in shock. And they said to their sons, didn't you read the instructions? Didn't, didn't you listen to what the instructions had to tell you? And they spoke up in confidence. No, no, we didn't. We did it all ourselves. <laughs> and the parents, they, they looked at one another, and they, they shook the couch, and it shook more than it should. And they said, I think you need to start over. I, I think you need to try it again. I think this time, you should probably read the instructions. You should probably listen to what the instructions have to tell you. And so they did. So the parents, they left the room again. They said, start over. And the sons, they talked amongst themselves. And the older son, the wiser son, he said to his little brother, he said, mom and dad are right. We should listen to the instructions. We should follow the steps that they need to. So the older son said to his younger brother, he said, I'm going to read you the instructions, and you're going to do all the work, and you're going to put it together. And that worked pretty well for the, the first couple of steps that were very simple. Screw this screw in here, put this piece together here. But, but as the steps got a little bit more complex, the first son, he just kept reading on and on and on and on. And his younger brother, who was doing all the steps, putting the couch together, he heard his older brother speaking. But he got overwhelmed looking at all the pieces scattered all over the floor, all the tools he needed. He could hear his brother's voice, but he became overwhelmed. He did nothing. He sat there, and nothing was built. And rumor has it they're still building the couch to this day. He's overwhelmed. Listening to what we hear, it can be challenging. It can be hard sometimes. Jesus, he, he, he's painting a picture in our gospel reading. At the end of our gospel reading, he's finishing up the Sermon on the Mount, the famous sermon that he starts all the way back in Matthew chapter 5, where he begins the sermon by saying, blessed are the poor, blessed are those who hunger, blessed are those who pursue God's righteousness, for they, he says, will inherit the kingdom of God. Jesus, he begins the sermon by talking about that, and then he ends the sermon with our gospel reading today from Matthew chapter 7. And Jesus, he's painting a picture of what true discipleship looks like. Jesus, he says in Matthew chapter 7, beginning at the 27th verse, he says, Everyone then who hears these words of mine and does them will be like a wise man who built his house on the rock. And the rain fell. And the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat against that house, but it did not fall, because it had been founded on the rock. That's the wise man Jesus is talking about. He continues with this illustration he's getting at, and he, he says at verse 26, And everyone who hears these words of mine and does not do them is like the foolish man who built his house on the sand. And the rain fell, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat against that house, and it fell. And great was the fall of it. Jesus, he's getting at this idea of what discipleship looks like. For, for Jesus, it doesn't just come down to hearing the words of God. It isn't just physically hearing what God says, or in our case, we're lucky enough to have Bibles on our phones or, or, or read. It's not, it doesn't just come down to reading what God's Word has to say. But for Jesus, what he's getting at, building your house on the rock like a wise man, it comes down to hearing the Word of God and doing it. You, you notice both the wise and the foolish man, they both heard what God said. 
One of them put it into practice and the other one didn't. That's the difference between this wise and foolish man. So Jesus is getting at this idea, painting this picture. True discipleship has two aspects. It's hearing the word of God and it's doing it. It's putting it into practice. It's living it out in our lives. I want you to imagine with me, one of the core relationships that we have in our world is the relationship between a husband and a wife. And they're in a marriage, as many of you who are married know, there has to be constant communication. I, I want you to imagine with me a husband and wife. And they're like every other ordinary couple. Their lives are busy. Their individual lives are busy. The lives that they do, activities they do as couples are busy. But in the early on in their marriage, they said to one another, we're going to set aside time every week to sit down, put our phones to the side, sit down with one another, and go through what does our schedule look like for the upcoming week. So there are no surprises. So we're on the same page. And so one night at dinner, as they're going over their schedules together, the wife says to her husband, hey, just a reminder, I have a dinner tonight, or I have a dinner with upcoming week with some of my friends from work, and we're celebrating a birthday, so I won't be here, you'll be on your own for dinner. And she kept going in the conversation, and she said, oh, just a reminder, also later in this upcoming week, I have a work meeting. And this work meeting is going to keep me past dinner time. So again, you're on your own for dinner again that, that night of this upcoming week. The wife went on to say, also remember, Saturday I'm getting lunch with my college roommate that I haven't seen since college. So for lunch on Saturday, again, you're on your own. And the husband, he's sitting there across the table from his wife at this dinner conversation. And he nods in agreement. He says, yes. That sounds great. That's amazing. Awesome. I'm glad we're doing it. A few days later, the husband gets home from work, and he doesn't see his wife's car. And he texts his wife, hey, I just got home from work. Where are you? And she texted back right away, I'm at dinner with my work friend celebrating a birthday. Don't you remember? We talked about this. I, I told you. Another day goes by, and the husband, again, he gets home from work, he doesn't see his wife's car, and he texts her, hey, I just got home, where are you at? Where are you at? I, I wanted to see you. And she texts it back saying, hey, don't you remember? We talked about this. I, I said I had a work meeting. I, I wasn't going to be home tonight for dinner. Later on in the week, it's Saturday, they're sitting down at the breakfast table having a nice cup of coffee, a relaxing morning. And the husband, he's trying to plan his day, and he's wondering, hey, what are we going to have for lunch on this Saturday? And, and the wife chimes up and says, hey, we talked about this. I, I'm, getting dinner with, I'm getting lunch with my college roommate I haven't seen in a long time. Don't you remember this? We talked about this. And this may be a relatable scenario, more relatable than we want to admit sometimes. <laughs> yeah, um, more relatable <laughs> than we want to admit sometimes. I think... The husband heard his wife. The husband heard the voice of his wife. He even nodded in agreement. Yeah, that sounds great. Hearing isn't just physically listening to something, but hearing it is listening with understanding. What does that look like? What does that look like for me? How does this apply to my life? When we study God's word, when we form habits of studying scripture, it's an amazing habit to form because we, we get to hear about God's amazing grace for you. In Scripture, God reveals himself to be faithful, to be, as we see in the Old Testament, abounding in steadfast love and faithfulness. We get to hear stories and narratives about God taking care of his Old Testament people, Israel, and how he's still taking care of you and me today. We get to hear about the love and the grace God has for you. But truly listening or, or, or truly hearing, yes, we want to gain understanding. Yes, we want to gain knowledge, but it doesn't stop there. Hearing God's word, it doesn't stop at, it doesn't stop at reading it. But it doesn't stay in our heads, but it carries through to our hands and to our heart. The things that we hear in God's word, it isn't just head knowledge that we absorb 
understanding or knowledge of who God is. But these words that we read together or individually in our own private devotional lives, they're words that don't stay in our head, but they carry through with our hearts. They carry through in our hands to live it out, to be the hands and feet of Jesus in this world for other people to see. As we study scripture together, it isn't just physically reading or, or physically hearing, but it's seeking understanding seeking knowledge. And the knowledge doesn't stay in our heads, but it carries through to our hearts and to our hands. I, I know I've used your imagination quite a bit this morning, but I want you to go on this imagination journey with me one more time. Imagine with me an extremely smart individual. This man is off the charts smart. He's the kind of person who loves math. I don't know if any of you love math. I'm not a big fan, but he, he loves math. He loves those word problems that take a few minutes to read, and he's so quick. He can, he can solve it by the time you get your phone out and get the calculator. He can solve it just in his head instantly. This smart man is the kind of guy who loves school. In fact, he loves school so much, he went back to school to get one, not one, but two doctorates. Just because he loves school so much, he loved absorbing knowledge and studying and, and reading books. This guy was a smart guy. And he was at his friend's house one weekend, and his friend had just bought a new house, and his friend was showing him all these different projects that he was kind of envisioning to really make the ho new home his. And his friend is standing there with his, his smart friend, who's a really smart man, and he said, hey, hey, while you're here, you could help me. I'm trying to finish my basement out, and since you're so smart, can you help me measure? How much drywall am I going to need to put drywall on the studs in the basement? And his smart friend chimed up and said, I don't know. I don't know how to do that. And the friend who owned the home, he scratched his head a little bit, and he thought to himself, wow, I've, I've never heard him say that before. I don't know. Huh, interesting. And then he said, well, maybe you can't help me with that, but there's this other project I want to do. I, I want to put this bookshelf, this bookshelf in the living room. Can you tell me, my smart friend, how much wood or how much lumber do I need if I want to make it this hall and I want to have X amount of shelves? Can you help me figure out how much I need to buy at the store? And the smart friend, he chimed up again and said, I don't know. I don't know how to do that. And, and the friend who owned the home was getting a little frustrated. He, and he responded in anger, and he said, What do you mean you don't know? You're, you're the smartest person I know. How can you not figure out these projects? How can you not help me measure to figure out how much I need? And the smart friend, he chimed up once again, and he said, I've already told you. My degrees are theoretical. They're all in theory. They're all theoretical math and theoretical science. They're not practical. I think maybe there are times in our lives when we read God's word and we're kind of like a smart man who went to college to get two doctor degrees in theoretical science or theoretical math. Perhaps there are moments in our times in our lives when we read God's word and we separate it from the rest of our everyday lives. We, we read God's word to gain knowledge and understanding, but that knowledge and understanding, at times, it stays in our heads. And it doesn't carry over or bleed over into other aspects of our lives. Perhaps there are moments in our lives when we treat reading God's word like a textbook to try to gain as much knowledge and understanding as possible, which is great. Don't hear me wrong. Knowledge and understanding in God's word, we want that and we desire that. But that knowledge and understanding doesn't stay in our heads like some theoretical science formula. But it's something that bleeds over, carries over into other aspects of our lives. As believers and followers of Jesus, in fact, we're called to embody the Word of God and live it out on a daily basis. You and me, as we open up God's Word and we hear about the grace and love that Jesus has freely given us by going to the cross, by rising from the grave, we're called to embody that grace and mercy with people that we interact with on a daily basis. That forgiveness that we read about in God's word, 
We're called to embody that forgiveness, forgiving other people even when they've hurt us deeply, even when they've hurt us badly. You and me today, we, we read about God's word and we read about his abounding, steadfast love and faithfulness. You and me today are called to embody that love. Like 1 John says, we love others because he first loved us. We're called to embody the love that we hear about that God has for us in his word. After all, isn't that what Jesus Christ did for us? In the first chapter of the Gospel of John, Jesus, he's called the Word of God. The Word of God made flesh, and he dwelt among us. Jesus, out of his great love for you, he came to this world to open your eyes, that you may know the love that God has for you. And Jesus, out of his mercy and grace for you, he loved you so much that he went to the cross he died a horrible death that we deserved. And he rose from the grave on Easter morning, setting you free, claiming you as a child of God, showing the victory that he has over sin, that he has over death, that he has over the devil. Jesus Christ, the Word of God incarnate, took on flesh that you may know the love that God has for and as we read God's word, as we study his word, as we get to know him better, this knowledge and understanding that we gain about Jesus doesn't stay in our heads, but it carries through into our lives and to the world. And it's my prayer that as we form habits of studying scripture, it's my prayer that we do hear the word of God, that we do form habits to read the word of God, that we do grow in knowledge and understanding of who God is. But I believe that as we read Matthew chapter 7, we hear this knowledge and understanding that we grow in as we read God's word doesn't stay in our heads, but it's something that's in our hearts and carries through to our hands to be little Christs, to be mirrors of Christ for those people in this broken world who need to know the love of the Savior. You have been set free by Jesus. He has opened your eyes to the truth. We're called to hear and respond. Hear and live. Live it out in our everyday lives. Now may the grace of God, the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, may guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. I invite you to please rise as we continue our service by Bring our praises before our Lord.
Please pray with me. Gracious Lord, we thank you for a chance to gather in your house to worship and praise you. We thank you for the mercy that you've given us through your son, Jesus, conquering death and sin and the devil for us, giving us the victory, claiming us as your children in this world. Father, one of the ways that you've claimed us as your children is through the gift of baptism. And today we rejoice and celebrate with Steve, Anna, Steve, Christina, George, Clara, Reed, Antoinette, Melissa, Linda, and we also give thanks for Theodore and Madden as they're brought into the family of God today. Father, continue to lead and guide them by your spirit that they may continue to live as children of you in this world. Heavenly Father, we give thanks for the many missions and ministries that take place here at Bethany Lutheran Church School and Preschool, and we give thanks for our mission of the month our partnership with the Emmanuel Community Outreach and the work that they do in the Argentine community. Father, continue to be with them. Continue to lead and guide them to find ways to be the hands and feet of Jesus with the people they serve. Allow them to continue to find ways to embody the word of God, the mercy and forgiveness that others may come to know the love of Jesus for them. Heavenly Father, God of life, we also give thanks for the birth of Harrison, the baby boy of the Stremel family. Continue to be with the Stremel family in this time of happiness and joy. We give thanks for a healthy birth. And Father, we ask that you continue to lead Harrison to the font, that he will be claimed by you and welcomed into your kingdom, which has no end. God of all comfort and God of all peace, we ask that you continue to be with those people on our hearts and minds in need of your healing. Today we especially lift up Ralph, Bob and Tammy, Brad, Harriet, Pat, Joseph, and those people that we name in our hearts. Father, continue to be with them. Give them comfort and peace. Allow them to look to you, even in this difficult time. We pray that they would receive healing that comes from you. And Heavenly Father, we also ask that you continue to be with those couples who are expecting a new son or daughter soon. Be with Ryan and Anna and Molly and me as we continue to await the arrival of a new son or daughter in this world. Continue to be with Anna and Molly that they may continue to have good health throughout the rest of their pregnancies. And Father, as these children are brought into this world, we ask that they may be led to your font to be welcomed into your family, which has no end. Father, we ask all of this in your Son's holy and precious name. Amen. As we prepare for the Lord's Supper, we remember the words that Jesus spoke the first time when he instituted it. So, our Lord Jesus Christ, the night he was betrayed, took bread. And after he gave thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples. And he said, take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way, also he took the cup after supper, and after he gave thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Let's do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Bethany, the peace of the Lord be with you always. Thank you. You may be seated. We'll now commune those who will be helping with the distribution of the Lord's Supper first, and then we will commune you all.
And now that you receive the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the forgiveness of all your sins, may it strengthen and preserve you both in body and soul unto a life everlasting. May you now depart in our Savior's peace. Amen. Please pray with me. Heavenly Father, gracious Lord, we give thanks for this meal that you've given us, a meal where we get to taste and eat the forgiveness of sins. Father, as fed and nourished children of you, as we get ready to, to depart this place, continue to lead us by your spirit that we may be embodiments of the word that you've given us. Live out the scriptures in our lives like a wise man who builds his house on a rock. Continue to be with us, Lord. Continue to allow us to hear your voice and live the love that you've given us through your son, Jesus. We ask this in your son's holy and precious name. Amen. Hear the blessing of the Lord to you from Numbers chapter 6. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto all of you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you his peace. Amen. Sing thank you. Thank you 